everyone, welcome to Galaxy TV. This is Good Morning Africa, and my name is Sandana Musaka Kabekuto. Thank you very much for joining us. Today I am joined with Albai Ambassador uh, Yusuf Amran, all the way from Morocco. You can imagine, it's a beautiful day, and we're definitely going to have the blast because we are at his residence. You can imagine, we're going to indulge, we're going to have good conversation, we're going to have good food. I'm sorry I can't share with you, but you know what? It's going to be great. So without wasting much time, let's just get down to it. Ambassador, we really, really appreciate and we're very honored for you to join us at Galaxy TV this morning for us to be talking about this. And I'm sure that Africa is indeed excited and looking forward to this amazing conversation and also to just to get to know you a little bit, you know, outside of this whole diplomacy thingy. And a lot of people that have not actually been part of this, they've got to realize that you're such a very, very fun person to be around. Welcome to Galaxy TV. Well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be your guest in my house, in the house of Morocco, a country who has a, a strong and uh, historical relations with uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, me too, I'm looking forward to enjoy this conversation, to exchange with you, to learn from you, because uh, I am in a learning process now after uh, eight months as ambassador to South Africa. Yes. Without going too deep and getting to our serious business of today, I would really want to find out, because this is a very important uh, 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 um, period as, low as, as far as Islam is concerned, the period of Ramadan. Exactly. How is it treating you? How are you um, enjoying during yeah. this oh, period? I am fasting, happily. Uh, I want to, uh, to tell you that the, the fasting is not only an issue of Islam. It's an yeah. issue of all the religions. Christianity, Judaism, and so on. And you remember, uh, Moses, when uh, he was waiting to receive the Torah from, from God, he was fasting for 40 days. Mm. So uh, Ramadan, for me, it's, a, it's a, and for all the, uh, the Muslims, is a month of forgiveness, of spirituality, mm -hmm. of tolerance. And, and I think uh, in this month, we, we need to, to think about the others, and especially the deprived people. Yes. And this, I think, the main message of Ramadan. No, in this period of uh, coronavirus, mm. I'm away from home yes. uh, without my family because I'm confined here. But I had I found a second family, two families. Okay, but, share about those families. The first family is the my team uh, uh, in the embassy with whom I exchange on a daily basis and yes. uh, and sometimes uh, we uh, we uh, we can have also if we are in a very small group share because the Ramadan is also sharing share the iftar. Yes. My second family is South Africa. Yes. I learned how to love this country. Uh, it is, of course, in the South, Morocco is in the north part of Africa, yes. looking over the Mediterranean mm -hmm. and South Africa. Uh, I really uh, uh, love this country because of its diversity, yes. because of, of, the, of its people, mm -hmm. and because it, we are all of us today targeted and we are always undergoing yes. difficult uh, yes. uh, period you know with this yes. uh, so uh, uh, for me uh, Ramadan is not only a month of spirituality but yes. also a month of sharing with others yes. but now as a diplomat you know it's a very relative concept at home for me yeah. because I believe in in many countries of the world in Latin America and Mexico in Chile Colombia in Spain so uh, the home is very rel relative concept. While we add that, actually, when we're talking about home, yes. I think we would actually, uh, it's going to be about time where we just get straight into business right yes. now right. and let us actually divulge on some of the topics that we're going to talk about here. Yes. But I mean, to start with is that you have spoken quite a lot in the past, I mean, in different interviews that you've been part of, where you actually uh, quote and refer as the fracture of the past. That's what you've been uh, talking about in most cases. So now we want you to, to, to give us a little bit of glimpse or rather give us examples of what exactly that one needs to do or one needs to prepare when we have to face, I mean, the unknown, to face the future. I mean, giving into the reference of the current situation with um, the COVID-19, which is actually one of the main reasons why we're actually having this topic with you, yes. to, car to try and figure out on how can Africa kind of, you know, um, approach this uh, situation at the moment. So if you could actually give us a little bit um, on that part. Yeah, exactly. As a diplomat, uh, uh, I must confess that the world has changed. Today is not anymore yesterday. Mm. And what we didn't 
do yesterday must become today our priority as Africans. Exactly. I think today what we need is to an action to review all the international system because it's not any more appropriate to uh, manage this kind of crisis. Yes. It's something new that we have never seen before. Mm. And as you are aware, the United Nations, the international organizations were created to prevent wars, to res resolve conflict, but not to solve Yes. challenges and face difficult challenges yes. like terrorism, like climate change, mm. Mm. like, uh, li like, uh, like uh, migration, for example. Yes. So yes. we need today to have to revisit, and I would say we need to implement the three R's. Yes. Our three R's are reshape, rethink, and refox. Yes. Because the, upper, the tools that we have today, the Security Council, mm -hmm. WTO, are not today uh, in, a, in, a, in a position to solve the ongoing conflicts yes. and not yes. in a position to, to deal with these global issues. Yes. So we need to revisit all this, of course, yes. because today we should build up a new world, yes. which is not built anymore on confrontation, yes. but more on empathy, yes. on solidarity and yes. humanity. And yes. I think we will have to play a role, all of us, and Africa, I think, must take the lead in this connection. Diplomat, you have actually mentioned quite very interesting and quite very important points. Um, I mean, talking about the challenges that Africa is actually facing. You mentioned things like your terrorism, climate change, and now we are faced with this COVID-19 yes. being part of this. Exactly. And uh, it is actually a challenge that we all need to get into full force. And you also mentioned about the three R's um, yes, that yes. you mentioned earlier, yes. which is quite very important that now yeah. we can maybe take a look a little bit onto that. And yeah. how can then now Africa prepare herself into now facing this new dimension of life and I mean, having to adapt to this new formula of living? Thank you very much for raising this question. It's very important for us. As you know, for Morocco, Africa is a priority mm. in foreign policy. I need what we, what we need, in fact, today is to work together to sit together and to plan together. Yes. And this is something. And the second element for me, which is also crucial, is today what matters is how much job do we create, how much growth do we promote, yes. and how we could respond to the expectation of mm. our young generation in Africa. Yes. We have the capacity to do so. And to be able to move forward, I think we need three major elements again. We need good leadership. Yes. Leadership. We need a vision. Yes. Vision which is based on, on the elements I told you before. And we need commitment. And today, what is a priority for us is to learn to work together within the African Union to create the job. I know we are passing now through difficult moments. Mm -hmm. And one country alone cannot solve all this, yes. cannot yes. solve all, all, all these yes. challenges, yes. and we need to work together. Yes. So today there is uh, a lot, we need more action, yes. we need more concrete. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, mm -hmm. because we have to make a balance yes. between the security and the health of our populations, exactly. and also the economic situation, yes. because we cannot you know, continue in this, uh, in this trend. So I think what should be done today uh, not only reshaping, revisiting our tools, but we need to have more commitment, uh, less, and, but without democracy, without the respect of human rights, without the crucial and important role of women. Yes. Because we are, sometimes we forget that the women is a central uh, 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 player, if I may say so, in Africa. Mm. Because the woman educates the children, she works, she, 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 she does more effort in order to build up. So what we need, in fact, is, as, as you say, as Africans, is to build a prosperous and audacious Africa. Yes. It, counting first on, on our own means, our own uh, uh, capacities, yes. and then we can seek for, for international cooperation, for support. But we know, as Africans, we need to do our own, own homework. Wow. Transparency accountability, leadership, good governance. These are the issues. We have no, we have no, no, more, no more choice mm -hmm. than work together and plan together. So today, 
with our future in us in our hand, we have our, 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 a good opportunity to review all these mechanisms. Yes, yes. We need to reinforce the African Union and we need to move forward. This is the most important. Definitely. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Without um, going, because actually I've got a lot of questions that actually yes. came out from what you have just said earlier about Africa having good leadership. But before we get into the questions, we're going to take a very short break. And when we're coming back, we'll divulge more into these questions and give you more about what's happening today. And please do not forget that later on, we are going to be joined by my co-host, uh, the, the Ambassador Elia spoke about diversity. Hey, you, you, you haven't met this one. You're actually going to get to see um, the caliber of South Africa in one. And when we are joined by my colleague, uh, Fabienne Francis, when she's talking to the doctor but at the moment we are still with uh, the ambassador of Morocco stay with us Welcome back again. My name is Sandra Nomosaka Kobi Kuto, and this is Good Morning Africa. And this is on Galaxy TV right here on Stasset. I am still joined by uh, the ambassador of Morocco, uh, His Excellency um, Numzane in Zulu. We call it Umnumzane. I'll teach you Zulu afterwards, okay? Umnumzane Yusuf. Amrani, who is joining us today, and we are actually talking and actually getting more details about what the situation that's happening and actually checking on what the things that up or the role of Africa during this period. Now, before going on break, Ambassador, you actually spoke about um, the way in which Africa can take responsibility by good governance, by making sure that we open opportunities for women. Quite very important point in there. I mean, there is this topic or this this kind of say that says Africa needs to take or must take responsibility for its own destiny. These were the words that have been uttered by so many different leaders. But just to mention a few, um, the, the, the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, and the one that usually preached this one more and more often is Pro Professor Lubumba from um, uh, Kenya. They've always been emphasizing on this very same call. And here you are as well. You are saying the very same thing. So it actually shows that leaders of Africa including yourself you already know what is it that needs to be done by Africa now how do we start by implementing this because talking about it is one thing but now acting or taking action with this it's another thing so now how can Africa start now taking a responsibility for its own de destiny democracy modernizations ownership prior to to, to, to job creation I think we should work for our, for our own destiny. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many recipes, but we need, as I said earlier, strong leadership that can lead the country. Maybe, so, sorry to cut you in there, Ambassador, maybe I should just maybe rephrase my question. Yes. Because um, if, if we are saying that Africa can actually take its yes. own destiny or yes. take responsibility for its yes. destiny yes. through the uh, 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 democracy and whatever, we've got countries like South Africa and many other African countries yes. that are quote-unquote democratic countries. Okay. But yet we still see over and over yes. again crises and difficulties exactly. in managing our own continent. We're seeing, um, I mean, the first, those that call themselves first world countries, they are still having quite a lot of control and influence in our own country. How can we then say, using our current democracy, how can we then act and say, now as Africa, as a democratic republic of South Africa, together with Morocco or whichever other yeah. African countries, we are taking full responsibility for our destiny. What is the way forward? What is what I told you. First, peace and security is essential. We cannot today move forward if we don't solve the ongoing conflicts in the continent. Mm. And we have a lot of conflicts. Yeah. And then we need to have the infrastructure, yes. the, vi the vision, which is very important, how we want to shape our future model. Equality, yes. accountability, leadership, yes. and democracy, essential. And then, and then depends on the countries which yes. are of which kind of model of development, agriculture, industry, you know, like the case of Morocco, we, the, thanks to the vision of the king, we review our model of development yes. because we were failed in some sectors and yes. in two sectors, which are also crucial today in Africa, exactly. health and education. Mm. Health education is, are the drivers for economic development. And we need, you know, uh, you, you need this strong will, this uh, policy, this strong policy 
to be able to move forward. And we need that. And we need the leadership. It's important. Of course, you, 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 you mentioned democracy. It's a driver, uh, social, and I know what, what you want me to tell, to say, yes. is the equality in the distribution of the, of the, of the precisely, wealth. Precisely. And, and, and the, this is essential. Doing, yeah. We cannot have, we need to base our model of development on ownership and to associate all the capacities, all the human uh, resources of the country. Yes. And we cannot, we cannot have to, 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 uh, to uh, how you say, levels yes. or two classes exactly. of, uh, we need to include all the men and women in the, in mm. the economic development mm. process. Mm. Now, uh, Ambassador, let's just go into the current situation. COVID-19 has taken the world by a storm. And uh, we've been seeing in a variety of reports that actually Morocco is doing quite very well. I mean, some of it being, um, I mean, they, they are exporting yeah. large quantities of masks mm. to outside. And yeah. they've made it mandatory for yeah. each and every Afro yeah. or Moroccan that is in the country or within yeah. the, 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 the kingdom to wear a mask. And, you know, it shows that you, uh, the Morocco is actually going to the right direction. So what are the things, or what are the, uh, rather the, 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 the stands or the things in terms of implementation of these policies that Morocco has put in place in order to make sure that the kingdom is dealing quite very well with this COVID-19 yes. challenge? Thank you for, for uh, asking this question. We are doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, even our example, our model today is be praised all over the world because we had first the leadership again, the king, anticipated because he gives priority to the security yes. and to the health of our mm. population mm. than economic development. Mm. And he was, he, the action was oriented towards three major uh, dimensions. Yes. The third dimension is uh, all health. And we have to mobilize all the doctors, the hospital, the military, the civil. And I will take, I would like, if you allow me, to uh, pay tribute yes. to the doctors and others uh, uh, civil servant of the mm. health mm. in all Africa, yes. especially in my country, Morocco, who were committed and who worked daily, daily, day and night to save the population. Yes. So we had to, uh, to, to work on the health system mm -hmm. on, and, and, and uh, you know, anticipation mm -hmm. in uh, 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 what we've been at hospitals. Yes. Then we had a very unique, unique model economic model. Yes. We have created the first curricular fund, a fund with a lot of billions of dollars in order to help the, the most developed people, people who lose, lose their jobs, yes. to give them shelter, to get them help. Yes. And the third dimension is solidarity. And the Moroccan people show solidarity amongst yeah. each other. Uh -huh. And this was strong. Yes. And then at the economic fig, we had new tools, innovations, yes. like the mask issue, for yes. example. Yes, yes. I think maybe we, if we can actually go a little bit more on this um, issue of in terms of um, the things that the Morocco is doing right in order to be able to tackle this, I think we can actually blow our own trumpets as Africa a little bit because, um, I mean, all the estimations and everything, they've been saying that um, when COVID-19 arrives in Africa, it will probably kill half of the population yes, yes, or yeah. whatever they're saying. But actually, Africa has proven that we are actually managing it way better than other African countries. And also to emphasize on the fact that you are saying you're paying tribute to the doctors and the nurses yes. that are getting into this. However, Morocco currently is also, as you mentioned earlier, that they distributed more than 50 million um, uh, masks that are being actually shipped outside of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, it's, it's, it's new employment opportunities that are coming in this, yeah. despite the fact that, of course, things are, are difficult. So now maybe if, if I would want to find out that what will be the final part of it, because we're looking forward to the time where this whole thing is over, right? So what next? What then after this whole um, COVID-19 is over with the mask and all those things that we're creating, then where to? Well, you responded to the question by yourself. When Africans want, they can succeed. Yes. And the, we have something in our culture in Africa is the concept of solidarity between yes. each other. Yes. And this will help us because we don't, when we have a father or old mother, you don't give, give, take them to this asylum. You t they stay at home, at home, they have love, they have affection. And that's why we didn't have too much people, all the people that, that died because they were taken care by the families themselves. Mm. So Africa, when Africa wants to work, 
we can succeed. I think this is a, a lesson for, for, the other, for the other nations when we want to, to count on, on our, our possibilities, mm -hmm. we can succeed. And I think uh, this uh, coronavirus showed us that we need to continue on this yes. track. We, we need to show more solidarity, more empathy uh, in the international relations, but also to use innovative tools. Yes. In, in the case of Morocco, for example, we had a lot of factories because we were, we were a major exporter yes. of textiles in Europe. So they were, this, this, these factories were uh, not working. Yes. So we, we, we said, okay, that's something else. Yes. else, let's do the mask. And yes. the mask, and then we had another interesting idea. The government has financed a part of the mask, the price of the mask. Yes. So everybody can afford to have a mask. Have a mask. It's, mask. it's about uh, one rand. Oh. Wow, because that's really good. And this was successful. This, I was actually about to ask, is it, yeah. is it something that they need to buy or they get it for free? Almost, Almost free. free. Almost free. One rent yeah, per month. Yeah. Okay, before we, could, we take another very short break, I mean, um, we understand that COVID-19 has brought about a lot of changes. I mean, it changes the way we live, the way we interact with one another, the way we conduct ourselves, you know? There are things that you usually would do, you scratch your head, you scratch your nose, you do whatever, but right now you're quite very conscious about everything that you do. This takes us and then into our life in business as to now how you conduct your business now how we have this thing we understand you know with us the young generation we okay we've been holding a lot of uh, things online and stuff like that but i'm so sorry with part of you guys not i cannot say the same so has it been easy for you to run your interviews and everything doing it on skype or zoom and stuff like that i will surprise you at the beginning, I was a little bit preoccupied because I am a very active person. Yes. And I said, my God, I, I would lose my mobility. Mm -hmm. This was an assumption, assumption, according to a wording of one of my advisors. Yes. But today, I think I learned to deal, to interact with the world through this media. I had the occasion to, to, to get very close yes. to, my, to my team. I work with them on a daily basis through this uh, new technology. Yes. So, 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 and as a diplomat, it was important to, to, to be, to maintain the yes. contact with, not only with the outside world, but your teams and your family. Yes. So we have changed. Of course, we need to, again, to adapt. But me, for me, maybe I am a, pa a passionate diplomat. Yes. So I am, uh, uh, so diplomacy blinds me and binds me. So this is, a, this is, this is the, the issue yes. of... Uh, uh, yes. but so, so I'm very happy here. In the month of Ramadan, I, um, I make my prayers. I have my time for spirituality. And on. I can surprise you, I've been publishing a lot, writing in South Africa and in yes. Europe and in Morocco about the, the future. Yes. I, I think will be not a bleak future, but future with a lot of opportunities that's for all of us. Perfect. That's perfect, Ambassador. That takes us back to when we say change is good. So having said that, let's take another yet very, very short break. And when we come back, we have got a very little bit. And please do not forget, we still have a whole lot more. I'm going to teach you how to cook Moroccan food. Welcome back again. We're still right here on Good Morning Africa. I am Susan Denomosaga Kobikuto. I'm still sitting with the Ambassador of Morocco. Now, before we go on break, we had a very interesting um, discussion about having to do things online. And we know that a whole lot of people were saying, oh, no, I don't think I can do this and whatever. But you actually surprised me when you said that you're actually now even enjoying doing this thing online and you've got more time and you can actually see that you're doing things better, if I could put it, than you were doing before. But now let us discuss the issue of security. We have seen different incidents where uh, we find people budging in, like a recent um, example of what has happened yesterday. Um, the Department of Water and Sanitation here in South Africa, they were busy holding their daily meeting, but then all of a sudden um, somebody just appeared on the screen that they don't even know who this person and it caused the whole commotion and the whole meeting to go into an abrupt uh, halt. Now let's find out from you, Ambassador, aren't you afraid of somebody coming in? I mean, the issues of diplomacy are quite very private issues. So aren't you maybe having that at the back of your head that, you know what, maybe it's not safe to do things online? Listen, uh, we take our precautions as far as security is concerned. Yes. We have the tools when we want to communicate. Uh, through uh, secretly, we can do it, you know, take watch. But today, listen, today 
there are not anymore, not many secrets today. Secret is how to, to, who is going to, to produce a vaccine, uh, who is going to have a military, but the rest, everybody is communicating. At the contrary, today, if you don't communicate, you cannot promote your ideas. You cannot tell your narrative. Listen to one, one very famous president in the world today. He uses Twitter to yeah. communicate. And this is, I can, if I can tweet, you can, uh, I think that the communication is a key issue today. Is it? So we have to take our precautions when you deal with, yes. with confidential issues, but when it comes to telling a narrative, telling your story, promoting a product, or uh, promoting some ideas, yes. I think you need to use communication, and you need, we have no choice, choice to use these new technologies. I don't know if I'm, I, I say Instagram, Twitter, uh, Internet. You're on Instagram? Yes. <laughs> yeah, most of the day is on Instagram. Hashtag. Hashtag. Diplomat. Uh, <laughs> you're going to see that. But then before we go, Ambassador, um, I know that we're still having a whole long time to yeah. spend with you today. And part of it is us enjoying or being part, which we're very honored that you're inviting us to be part of you, the breaking of your day of yeah. Imer, uh, uh, Ramadan, which is called Iftar. Am I yes. calling this uh, correct? It's Iftar, because you know, uh, uh, Ramadan is sharing. And my country, Morocco, is a old country with a long history. I, only our dynasty today is six centuries. So we love people. I'm here. One of my major action is what I call people to people. Yes. It is the most important for me if I leave South Africa, having been able to tell my narrative, to explain my vision, to also to explain my ambition, I will be very and more than happy. We, we're definitely sharing the experience of what's happened in Morocco, but we're here in South Africa. But that's thanks to you. So now tell us, if you can just a little bit, my friend, a minute, to explain to a standard person who doesn't understand what is Ramadan for and what does it serve. Earlier you spoke about the issues of fasting to say it is good for your health, it's good for your body. Yeah. It's something that any other person, regardless of what religion you're coming from, yeah. fasting is actually good. But now when we associate fasting with this maybe religion at this point. Well, can you just give us now outside of this? That's just a bit of that. Fasting is one of the uh, uh, recommendations of uh, Islam, yes. like praying. It's once a year, 30 days. You, you don't eat, you don't uh, drink, and, you, and other pleasures are forbidden from dawn to the sunset. And it is a month of spirit, spirit, spirituality, of sharing, of empathy, I think it is we need in this in this world with a lot of conflicts. We need this kind. Of course, uh, this is the true Islam, not the Islam because I know where you want to go. The others, the the extremists, they have they have no room for this kind of a policy, yeah. for this of, of, of cohabitation of, of this kind of relations. Yes, but yes. Ramadan is this is and also you have to behave well during Ramadan. You you have to behave. You have has exemplary conduct towards the others and to the other religions also you have to respect like you came to my house today i'm fasting but i'm offering you some tea and this is i think it's a, it's it's not tolerance but it is i think it's a spirit of sharing with yes. the others yes Thank you very much, Ambassador. As I said, it's still very early in the morning, so we still have a whole lot of time that yes. we're going to be with you here until the evening, of course, yes, where we're going to sit yeah. and, and eat with you. Yeah. And this is actually very good for me because I'm going to cook for you today. Okay. Thank you so much, Ambassador. We join. We will definitely be joined with you later on um, as we are taking you through with this. It's going to be a little bit more fun because I'm, I'm going to be with my colleague. So you're going to get to meet her. I'm sure you would love to get to meet her. Okay. So uh, having said that, thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. As we have said, uh, we're still going to be joined by Ambassador later on. And as I said, we're going to have to have a nice uh, uh, iftar. So as of from me, merci beaucoup. Je vous en prie. But anyway, we see you again. My name is Sandana Moussaka Kabekuto. Till next time, stay tuned.